quarterback Anthony Richardson showed just enough in limited playing time to give Colts fans hope for the future. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Hello, everyone. I'm Zach Hicks, your favorite co-host here on the Locked On Colts podcast and your film nerd over at horseshoehuddle.com. Today, I'm here to bring you the in-depth breakdown of quarterback Anthony Richardson. We're going to talk about the good from his rookie season, the bad from his rookie season, or maybe maybe to keep it lighter, you know, not say bad, but the areas that he needs to improve upon, and then an overview on Anthony Richardson and where he needs to go from here and where this Colts team can go with him at quarterback so let's kick it off with the positivity let's talk about what Anthony Richardson did well in his limited playing time as a rookie now he did not have too many snaps overall just 173 offensive snaps Uh, that includes basically a full game against the Jacksonville Jaguars in week one uh, an entire game against the Los Angeles Rams in week four and then partial games against the Houston Texans in week two and the Tennessee Titans in week five Uh, so you know injury plague season didn't play the entire year but in those 173 snaps we saw just a glimpse of what Anthony Richardson could be for this Colts team and that glimpse I, I thought was really good like Yes, there were some moments where he looked like a rookie quarterback. There were some some halves where, you know, the accuracy wasn't there and some of the decision making wasn't there. But overall, I thought it was a really, really strong opening debut, uh, a strong opening debut of games for the young quarterback. I mean, the first thing that really stands out is just that mobility, that explosiveness, that ability to run with the ball and be a designated runner. I mean, the Colts called 15 design rushes for him this year, uh, which he went, which he took for 100 total yards and four touchdowns. He had four explosive runs on those, so runs over 10 yards uh, with those 15 carries. So that's what, like a 26% explosive run rate. That's that's pretty darn impressive for a quarterback carrying the ball uh, and still trying to learn on which reads to make and which which times he can, you know, get away with using that speed to the outside. So uh, to be explosive in the run game, to get those four touchdowns, especially on that that insane goal line play that the Colts styled up for him, uh, did some great things there. Uh, overall, the entire Colts offense was very explosive under Anthony Richardson. I mean, they were top 10 in the NFL in explosive pass rate and explosive run rate with him in there. Uh, that Los Angeles Rams game was the greatest example of it where the run game was clicking and had like three or four explosive runs with him contributing two of those. Uh, the passing game was really clicking. I mean, he had explosive passes to Drew Ogletree. I think he had two explosive passes to Drew Ogletree in that game. One to Marley Cox, one to Josh Downs, and one to Alec Pierce. A very, very explosive offense against the Los Angeles Rams. And what almost led to that comeback victory for uh, the Colts in that one. Going a little bit more into Richardson as a thrower and, and with his mechanics and how his eyes are and stuff like that, I thought he was way more developed than a lot of people gave him credit for coming into this year. Uh, there were a lot of talk. There, there was a lot of talk, not, not a ton of talk, but there was you know a good amount of talk about uh, maybe him being a project, maybe him needing to sit for an entire year and just you know get the mechanics and get the accuracy under control before he gets on the field. But When we saw him out there, like, yes, I know he only completed 59% of his passes in those four games that he appeared in, but it never looked like this super, super project player. Like, like I thought he looked more developed mechanically and just with what he was doing within the pocket with his reads and with his eyes than, say, even like a Josh Allen did in Josh Allen's rookie season a couple of years ago. So I thought he looked much more developed than a lot of people would give him credit for coming into the year. Uh, upper body mechanics were outstanding. Lower body, I mean, I think there were some things you can improve upon. But overall, uh, I like that his body was typically connected when he was throwing. The upper arm torque and mobility with it was great. Uh, and he just has unreal arm talent. I mean, we could see that on many of these throws. So even with the mechanics not being absolutely perfect all the time, when you have that torque in the way that you throw it, when you have that power uh, in your upper body, 
uh, it doesn't really matter sometimes. So yes, it can get better. And we're going to talk about that in segment two, like just how we can clean some things up with his mechanics. But uh, overall, I thought he looked much better than anticipated coming into the year. Uh, in terms of his eyes, I think a lot of the half field read stuff the Colts did and a lot of the, you know, I don't want to say more generic stuff, but a lot more of the simplistic type reads where it's like, you know, hey, you have a bang eight behind a flat route here. So you're really reading the one or two conflict defenders. If this linebacker steps up to the flat, you're going to throw the bang eight to the receiver. If that linebacker sits back on that bang eight, you're going to hit the flat. I think he did a good job of reading those things really well and getting the ball out quick and effectively. And we saw him hit on a couple of bang eights to uh, Drew Ogletree against the Tennessee Titans. We saw um, when the Colts are running a lot of four verts type stuff against the Los Angeles Rams, he did a good job of reading the linebacker depth and attacking uh, the middle of the field to Drew Ogletree on a lot of those plays. So I think the eyes were good. I think the anticipation was good on some reps as well, where uh, he hit an outbreaking route to Michael Pittman Jr. in week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars, which I thought the anticipation was great. There were a couple other throws where, you know, the accuracy was maybe a little off, but where he was going with the ball and what he intended to do with the ball was great. Uh, so I, I really liked a lot of the development we saw of him as a passer. I thought even if you looked at him from the first preseason game uh, this past offseason all the way to his last game he played in the regular season, we saw a marketable improvement in the way that he was playing uh, in terms of just anticipation, mechanics, knowing where to get the ball and just control in the offense. And it really is a bummer that we didn't get to see him play for an entire season because imagine where that development would have been by the end of the season, if he continued that pace that he was on. But uh, overall, I mean, if we're just looking at what we have in front of us and in, in the in the games that we could see, there was an improvement each and every week in terms of being a passer. I mean, the way that he finished those last two games, I mean, the, the Rams game uh, in the second half was some outstanding football. I mean, that was legit top tier quarterback play in that second half of that Rams game that, that brought the Colts back. Uh, and then you look at the beginning of that Titans game, he had 73 yards passing in the first quarter was playing some really great ball, had a really nice throw to Josh Downs down the field on third and long. Uh, he was playing some really, really good quarterback play there in those last two games uh, before his unfortunate injury that knocked him out for the rest of the season. Uh, another thing that I want to add on top of this before we move to our second segment is uh, he kept the turnovers down and he kept the touchdowns high, which is if you can do that as a quarterback, that's great. I mean, I know interceptions are a little bit skewed and, and I don't want to say they're not as important as what people say, but look, I'd rather have a quarterback be aggressive and turn the ball over at times than have a quarterback who just doesn't take chances and keeps those interception numbers down. Uh, but with Anthony Richardson, we saw a quarterback who was pushing the ball down the field, who was getting touchdowns and was keeping those turnovers down. I mean, he threw a pick in the first game and he fumbled against the Rams. But outside of that, those were his only two turnovers where inversely he had seven touchdowns, uh, seven touchdowns in 173 snaps is just insane. That touchdown rate obviously will drop a little bit uh, if he plays an entire season, but seven touchdowns and 173 snaps is some great football from your young quarterback. So overall, I mean, if we're looking at the good for Richardson, the mobility was as good as advertised when he was out there. Uh, the passing I thought was much more developed than what we should what we could have expected. I think he did a lot of good things with his eyes and mechanics down the field. And again, he kept the turnovers down and he kept the touchdowns high. It's hard to complain about that. I mean, look, it was only, what, 10 and a half quarters, 11-ish quarters that we saw of Anthony Richardson in year one. But in those 11-ish quarters that it is, like, he played some really good football. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't outstanding. It wasn't otherworldly. But you saw some really, really good football and some really, really good moments in that film. I mean, the beginning of the Houston game, the beginning of the Tennessee game, and the second half of the Rams game, I think all you need to do is watch those those little bits of those games or just watch, you know, what he was doing in that, in those moments. And you can see how good of a quarterback he can be in the NFL. So I think the future is great with him, uh, but we're going to talk, you know, about some areas where going forward, we need to see a little bit more improvement or just see him take that next step uh, on the football field for him to be the legit future quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. But first, prize picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. With the basketball season here, you guys can now do a combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. I know a lot of you guys are like me, and you're a big fan of you know the Indiana Pacers as well as the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so this league is created specifically for people like you. You can do combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. I know the football season only has a couple of games left, uh, but for example, you could do something like Pascal Siakam and 
Mark Andrews receptions and three pointers made. I know that'd be a little bit lower than most things because we don't even know if Andrews is playing, but that's just one example here. Uh, you could do something like that with the combo league and, and just have a lot of fun watching multiple sports. Prize Picks also offers the greatest policy in all of daily fantasy sports, which is the reboot policy so that your entries are still in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player that exits, exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. PrizePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to prizepix.com slash LockedOnNFL and use code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. PrizePix, daily fantasy sports made easy. Alrighty, guys, we are jumping into this Anthony Richardson conversation here. In our next segment, we're going to talk about, again, I don't really want to say the areas that he was bad or he struggled, but just areas that need to improve going forward. Not, not necessarily all on him when he was on the field, but overall, just things that need to get better with more reps. I mean, again, 173 snaps as a rookie is not what we expected or wanted coming into this season when he was named the starter of the Indianapolis Colts. You know, obviously you want a full season of play just to see where he's at by the end of the season. And it's hard to really gauge exactly what kind of quarterback he's going to be after 173 snaps. We can look at the flashes and be like, okay, cool. The future is bright, but that's all you can really do with that low amount of snaps. But uh, number one, I think the accuracy is still, again, better than what it could have been, but it's still a little bit of a work in progress. We saw some, you know, passes floated high in that week one game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, we saw spurts in that Rams game where passes were just missing the mark, uh, not getting to their target, uh, not really where they exactly needed to be. Uh, again, this is stuff that just takes more time with mechanical work and with timing and, and just overall feel for the game. But uh, it is something that needs to get better. I mean, look, with, with his athleticism, you can get by with him being a 60 percent passer. But if he were to get that up to a 62, 63, 64, 65% passer, I mean, you're talking, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in football. Look what Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson were able to do when they were able to develop their game past being a 58% passer to being more in the mid 60s. They became MVP candidates or, you know, in Lamar Jackson's case, a two-time MVP or a future two-time MVP uh, once the voting comes out this year. So uh, if Richardson can just keep getting better with the completion percentage and his overall accuracy, uh, I think that the sky's the limit for him as a player. I think his overall feel for the pocket and just reading progressions needs a little bit more time and more reps on the field. Uh, I think he's great at moving within the pocket and escaping pressure, but there is this, this thing in his back of his mind that he just doesn't have yet, where it's when to kill a play, when to you know escape from the pocket and run with the ball, when to escape from the pocket and keep your eyes down the field, when to feel for the rushers behind you. I think he's better than some quarterbacks because, again, we watched some Gardner Minshew this year, and and sometimes that internal clock was more of a mess with Minshew than it was with Richardson. Uh, but I do think there is that overall just innate ability to understand those situations and and understand you know the the flow of the NFL game a little bit better uh, when it comes to pocket management and progression management. To go with again with the progressions, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to say the stereotypical thing that people say about young raw quarterbacks and say like. Oh, he doesn't, he's a first read guy or he's a two read guy. Cause he's not, we saw a lot of really good moments where his eyes were working, you know, on mesh concepts, for instance, he was working one, two, three, four, real quick, getting to the three or the four read and getting that ball out and, and creating space for his receiver. Uh, but I do think there are some moments where he was so focused on going through those progressions where it's like, okay, I need to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I need to read my progressions here where he was coming off one too early or he was coming off two too early, or he didn't work back to one or work back to two. Uh, and he missed some opportunities down the field. And, you know, I keep coming back to a lot of these Yankee concepts that the Colts are running early in the season with Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman jr. Where it's like Richardson was kind of going through the motion of, okay, I look deep and then I come back to Pittman the two. And then once Pittman's not open, I come back to the flat as my three. That's not how that read should go there on Yankee. The Yankee read is let me read my the safety back there. If that safety is not running forward or he's or if that safety is running forward or he's staying still, that's when I'm taking that number one. Uh, if that safety is coming up, if that safety is sitting back, then I'm going to number two to Pittman. And then if they're playing like a deep off coverage, then I come to three. So it shouldn't be one, two, three. It should be one, two, three. Like it should be a little bit slower. You got to let the progression breathe a little, breathe a little bit. And I think that was more of the issue with Anthony Richardson, where it was like the brain was saying, okay, here's my progressions. One, two, three. I need to go one, two, three, 
one, two, three, one, two, three. Let me get back to that flat uh, because the speed is so much different in the NFL, where when you have more time and feel for the game and the speed of the NFL game, then your brain can go again, one, two, three. You know, I know you don't always have time like that, but I just think this is a minor thing that can be cleaned up with more reps on the field. There are some situations where you have to have that better feel for, okay, we're taking a deeper shot here. I need to, I need to let that deeper shot breathe a little bit, and then I can work back to two, three, four, you know, in my progression. So that was another minor thing I had on his film there. Another one, and this is maybe this is just my PTSD with Carson Wentz, but chill out a little bit on the uh, on the throwing out of pressure. Um, there were a couple moments this year where Richardson, uh, I, I, notoriously, I think it was the Texans game where he was getting hit by a Texans pass rusher. I think it was actually on a Yankee concept that he passed up down the field and he threw the ball out of bounds with his left hand. Now, the ball went out of bounds, but please let's not make a habit of that. <laughs> like, don't throw the ball away with your left hand while you're being hit because it just takes one, you know, slip of the hand or anything like that to be a fumble or an interception. Uh, there was another one against the Tennessee Titans in that game uh, week five where he was getting hit and he tried to throw – I think he tried to throw it out of bounds or throw a screen or something and he threw it backwards. So it ended up being like a 22 yard lost sack or something. Uh, just moments like that where it's like, look, he obviously knows that sack avoidance is a major thing for a quarterback, which I love because it is. I mean, a sack is basically like a turnover. So you want to avoid those sacks as much as possible, but you can't do that at, as like you can't you can't be so focused on avoiding sacks that you're making massive game changing mistakes like potential turnovers like uh just being erratic with the ball so there has to be that that perfect marriage between the two things there uh so i think he can get a little better at that i was a little scared at times when he was throwing out of sacks uh overall chemistry with the receivers on landmarks and timing again that comes with just more reps on the field uh there were times where you know it looked like richardson was throwing an inaccurate pass but he was throwing it to a spot where he thought his receiver was going to be and the receiver took a different option or took, you know, went under a defender instead of going over a defender when Richardson went through it over the defender and something like that. Uh, other times where the ball would have a little bit too much pace on it and receivers dropped it because they weren't anticipating that kind of pace. Uh, those things get ironed out with time and with more reps. I mean, we saw with, with CJ Stroud this year, for instance, with the Houston Texans where don't get me wrong, Stroud was on fire early in the season, but he took that next step after the first like three or four weeks when the receivers and him really got on the same page and got the right timing down uh, and became really comfortable with each other. So that's just another thing where, again, just more reps, more reps, more reps with all these guys. Uh, we'll see a much better Anthony Richardson in that in that sense there. And then the final one, man, it's just stay healthy. It's just stay healthy. I mean, look, we can't really look at Anthony Richardson – and say like, oh, the solution is never run him again because that'll protect him. Where we're talking about the the season in the NFL where every single quarterback got hurt. I mean, it, it didn't matter if you were a pocket passer or a runner. I mean, Anthony Richardson got hurt on two designed runs, but then you look at Aaron Rodgers got hurt in the pocket. CJ Stroud got a concussion in the pocket. Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. In the you know, all these guys getting hurt in the pocket. So just keeping him in the pocket is not going to be a way to fix him from ever being hurt. But one way that you can mitigate these injuries is looking at what like Lamar Jackson did this year. When Lamar Jackson got out in space on the run and on design runs, you know, the Ravens were stable, still able to do this because Jackson did a great job of knowing when to use his full speed. But then when defenders were closing in, throttle down, brace brace for impact and get down the ground. That way you're not taking these massive hits. I mean, when you look at Richardson's two injuries, both of them came on plays where he didn't protect himself. I mean, the first one, he slowed up before he got in the end zone and, and fell back and hit his head. Uh, the second one, he tried to fight for more yardage when he could have slid down for a two yard gain instead of a four yard gain. Uh, and it resulted in busting his shoulder. So I think Richardson's going to do a lot of that studying this off season. That'll be one of his most important tasks is just seeing what guys like, you know, Lamar Jackson, what guys like Jalen Hurts are doing and how they throttle down before they're getting hit to save their bodies from those bit massive hits down the field. But uh, that's another big thing is just stay healthy, man. Like all this point, all these points I'm making are completely moot if he's not on the field. So he needs to stay healthy uh, and really show that he can be the Colts quarterback of the future here in 2024. Uh, but coming up, we're going to continue this conversation about Anthony Richardson. We're going to talk about the future with him as the Colts QB1.
But first, passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 22 million, or with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. All righty, guys, we're continuing this conversation about Indianapolis Colts quarterback of the future or hopeful quarterback of the future, Anthony Richardson. Again, coming off a really positive uh, debut here in 2023. Just needs to stay healthy. He needs to improve on a couple things. But overall, very, very promising start for the young quarterback. Uh, but what are we expecting here for the Indianapolis Colts going forward with him? Well, I think when you look at what he was doing earlier in the year and what Shane Steichen had planned for him early in the season, you could tell that the offense, for the most part, kind of had a muzzle on it kind of had a silencer on it or whatever, you know, whatever reference works for you guys there. Uh, the offense was taking it slow those first couple of weeks to really acclimate him to what they wanted to do. You know, they were relying a little bit more heavy on the quarterback run game, a lot more on one, two progressions, a lot more on RPO type reads and stuff. And then as the games got more intense, as the game started going down the line a little bit for him, then we saw the, the passing game plan, especially really open up for Anthony Richardson. Again, the Los Angeles Rams game, that second half, a lot of uh, just four verts against the Rams quarters defense, a lot of uh, option routes that we were seeing run in that game, a lot of full field progressions that he was doing a really good job with. And then you go to that Tennessee Titans game the week after, and you saw a lot more of the same stuff, a lot more stuff where he's having to do a lot more at the line. He's having to do a lot more with his progression work and a lot more down the field. And we were seeing great success with that, with Anthony Richardson in those situations. So I think it's feasible to say that the offense was going to keep growing around Anthony Richardson while still having that dynamic rushing threat of him running the ball or having that uh, explosive ability of him throwing the ball down the field and stuff like that as well. So um, I think there's there's optimism when it comes to Shane Steichen molding this offense around Anthony Richardson. Uh, we saw with Gardner Minshew this past season, the offense was limited at times, but it was still kind of effective because Steichen knew what to do and he had that proper proper feel on how to keep the offense going despite having a limited option at quarterback. Now when you throw a guy like Richardson back in there who has the mobility, who has the arm strength, who has um, just an overall feel for the game that might be even better than Gardner Minshew's, then I think that you are just taking this offense to another level. Uh, regardless of what they do this offseason with more weapons and, and more guys in there as well. So I think the the op, there has to be a lot of optimism there. Uh, again, I understand people being concerned about the health and being a little concerned about uh, if Richardson can make it through a full season because we just haven't seen it yet. But I do think you know this whole offseason he's going to work on being able to throttle down to avoid those hits. I think he's going to work on his pocket movement and when to, again, get down and avoid those big hits in the pocket as well. And I think hopefully, I mean, hopefully, again, the NFL is such a crazy sport where it just takes one hit and you're done for the season or done for your career even. Uh, so you never know. But I do think he's going to do a much better job of protecting his body this next season. Uh, but look, I mean, at the end of the day, Anthony Richardson has the top tier mobility, has the elite arm, uh, and he really isn't that far away as a complete passer to be one of the next best quarterbacks in football. Uh, he just needs the time and the reps with the offense. But again, the flashes were great. I mean, everything we saw from him on the field was really good flashes. I mean, again, it's not perfect. I'm not saying that he was out there playing like, you know, like Pat Mahomes from day one, but you could see even in that week one game against the Jacksonville Jaguars that the Colts had something here. Like, I don't know how any Colts fan could watch what Richardson did uh, in those first five weeks, those four games that he played in, and not be optimistic right now. What we were seeing was some really good football from a young quarterback, and, and maybe it wasn't on C.J. Stroud's level. You know, but it was different from that. It was mobility. It was explosion. It was red zone prowess where he was getting in. And he was scoring touchdowns for the Colts when they got in the red zone. He was doing all these things at a really high level, despite, you know, still not being there fully as a passer, as a quarterback. So 
I really do think that there are a lot of good things to be excited about with Anthony Rich, and I think he fits this offense super well. Uh, I can't wait to see him have more just chemistry with these weapons. Uh, maybe a whole offseason off season with Jelani Woods would be great if he's you know a part of the future as well, but uh, just developing more chemistry with Michael Pittman Jr., uh, Josh Downs, more of the empty personnel type stuff would be great. Uh, Alec Pierce getting more involved in the vertical passing game. And then if they add more weapons, I mean, look, they they talked about it in the, in the end of season press conference, Chris Ballard did, about adding more explosion element to the offense in terms of another pass catcher. I mean, he kind of alluded to it. He didn't really say exactly. But I do think there's a lot of elements that can be in play here to really take this offense to the next level with Anthony Richardson as that guy. Um, and the next thing really is just, he needs to take that full step, go from flashy player who did a lot, a lot of good stuff in 173 snaps into legit franchise starting quarterback in 2024. But I think for Colts fans out there, there's a lot to be hopeful here. There, there is really a lot to be hopeful. Uh, Anthony Richardson seems like a great kid who did a lot of good things around Indy, uh, really showcased his, his ability on the field and off the field. It really just comes down to health. I, I really think. If he played this whole season, I, again, this is projecting. I'm not saying anything with full certainty here, but I think that if he played the full season, we'd be talking about him right now the same way that Packers fans are talking about Jordan Love. Or, I mean, even to a, a more extent, maybe close to the same way that the league is talking about C.J. Stroud with the Houston Texans. Uh, the, the starts were that good for Richardson. He, he played some great football, uh, and I'm excited to see him back here in 2024 because I really do think – uh, those couple snaps we saw this year, he was just scratching the surface. And he can take this Colts offense and this Colts team in general to higher, higher levels. Uh, as long as he stays in the field, as long as he learns to throttle down and stay on the field, I really do think that he can take this Colts offense and Colts team to the next level. But before we get out of here today, guys, I do want to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national sports covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. If you guys don't already, make sure you're following at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2, all on X. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. We love your guys' ratings, reviews, and we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow.